Imagine a world where video games have no bass, where explosions sound like glass shattering. Headshots feel limp. And stabs pointless. But now, let's return to reality. As you just experienced, bass does not simply add clarity, it also adds impact. Letting you not only hear, but feel what you're seeing on the screen. But what exactly bass is? Also, why does it have such an effect on us? And how its usage in video games evolved over the years? If you're interested in any of these questions, then stick around or jump around if you wish. As in this video, with the help of some research papers and through the analysis of around 850 gigabytes of audio data, I will answer all of them and more. So, what is bass? In the context of this video, it's not a fish or an instrument that people like to slap. Rather, it's the deep and low sound we often hear in music or audio effects. But then, what deep or low means? Or what sound is in general? Well, not going into the physics, simple sounds such as... can be described as a combination of loudness, also known as amplitude, duration, and frequency, which is the number of waves or cycles per second a sound effect has. To understand bass, it's also important to mention that frequency is measured in Hertz, and that humans can hear frequencies in the range of 20 to 20,000 Hertz. It's also important to understand that complex sounds, such as... can be expressed as a combination of simple sounds. And so, in the case when a sound effect sounds sharp, this means it's mainly composed from high-frequency simple sounds. And in the case when a sound effect sounds deep, it means it's predominantly composed from low-frequency sounds. And in this context bass, is just sounds in the 20 to 250 Hz range. Of course, this is a simplification, but even so, it shows that by breaking down an audio file into its frequencies, it's possible to determine how bass heavy or light a sound is. And luckily, this is relatively easy to do by using a math thing called a Fourier transform, which I'm not charismatic enough to explain in detail in an entertaining way, and so I won't. But what I want to mention is why all of this matters. This is because, well, many scientists show that bass-heavy sounds can energize, make us feel more confident, and get our blood pumping. They do so in many ways, including by literally making us move by vibrating in the same frequency as our bones and muscles. <laughs> And so, as these effects became more well known to the general public, some game developers might have also decided to add impact to their games by adding more bass. This is of course is a conjecture and an oversimplification, as good sound design is much more than just playing with bass. But even so, as it provides an easy tool to add impact, Several questions naturally arise, such as how prevalent bass is in games, and how its usage evolved over the years. And to answer these and some other questions, I decided to use a rather simple methodology that I will describe very, very briefly. First of all, I had to decide what to analyze, and so I decided to focus on around 25 to 30 top single-player games released each year from 2000 until 2024. I focused on top games to ensure representativeness, 
and the single player ones because well they provide a much more uniform experience to players compared to multiplayer games that often offer different experiences catered to different playstyles. Also decided not to cover games released before the 2000s, as many of them had their audio design dictated not by the creativity of the sound engineers working on the games, but rather by hardware limitations. And with all of this in mind, ended up with around 750 games to analyze. Then, to figure out how bass heavy these games are, I collected around 3 to 5 no commentary playthroughs for each of them, in order to capture different experiences different players might have in the same game. After that, from the playthroughs I extracted the audio and using the magic of math, I calculated how prevalent bass frequencies were in each playthrough in each game, allowing me to figure out which of them are bass heavy and which are not. And for those that are wondering, I know this is not an ideal approach as there is some issues, but as a good YouTuber I will just sweep them under the rug as I also don't think that a lot of you want to hear my long-winded rants on the efficacies of different methods and approaches. And with all of this out of the way, what does the data show? Well, first of all it shows a very obvious thing that there is no strong relationship, based on correlation analysis, between base and game review scores. This is not surprising, as a good game is good not because of... Goodbye. But also because of... Or, in other words, the results imply that more or less base does not make a game better or worse. However, even though base does not affect game reviews, it is quite prevalent in them, as on average 17% of the audio in the analyzed games was comprised from bass sounds. This average also varies quite a bit across genres, as for example at the very bottom of bass usage we have point and click games. This is expected, as these games are often more chill in nature, as in them players can move at their own pace where action scenes are few and far between. This in turn also implies that the game developers do not need to use bass as much to rush the player or to pump up the jam. Though, of course, these games are not devoid of it completely, as you can still find some bass heavy moments, especially in sad and tense scenes. A good example of this is the ending to The Walking Dead Season 1 game, where a particularly sad scene heavily utilized low frequency droning noises making, for example, this 24 second clip around 34% base. <laughs> but when it comes to the genre that uses base the most, we have a bit more surprising results. As it's not the bombastic shooters, the eerie horror games, or the action heavy fighting games. Instead, at the top we have the little genre that could, we have indie games. And when I say indie is at the top, I mean it dominates. As if we look at the top 10 games based on base usage, we'll see that even though some of them are not strictly indie titles, as they have huge teams behind them, all of these games have this indie feel as they are smaller in scope with a unique art style. And these games utilize base predominantly not through explosions or destruction, but to build atmosphere. A good example of this is Baba Is You, a puzzle century game that uses droning sound effects to establish a quirky and slightly mysterious mood, while the rhythmic usage of low frequency sounds creates a meditative and a bit hypnotic effect. And many similar examples can be found in many other indie titles, where, for example, bass heavy sounds are used to convey an underwater ambience or a strong wind. And why do indie games rely more on bass than others? Hell if I know. But I can speculate. Maybe they do so because such games are often slower in nature, and so they need bass to create a strong atmosphere. 
Maybe it's because they're often passion projects that do not follow the whims of the investors, allowing their developers to polish every aspect of the game as much as they want, including its sound design. Or maybe it's because many of these games have a lot of budgetary constraints, forcing the developers without any formal sound design training to create the game's soundscape themselves, which might lead to over-reliance on bass-heavy sounds because, well, such sounds appeal to the human psyche. But whatever the reason is, indie games use bass the most, while shooters, adventure games, and fighting games are somewhere in the middle in terms of bass usage. Oh, and if you want to know which game uses bass the least, it's Power Wash Simulator. The reason for this is quite obvious, it's because in this game the tools that you're using make the following sounds. This leaves us with one last question. Do new games use more bass than old ones? And the answer to this is a resounding maybe. On the one hand, the frequency plot showing how prevalent sounds in the 0 to 2000 Hz range each year were provides only seldom hints of this trend. As in the plot, you can see, sort of, that in the 2000s, sounds beyond the 2050 Hz range were a bit more prevalent than in later years. More evidence on this trend can also be found by looking at the top 10 years by base, which predominantly includes years after 2010, with some exceptions. But considering that the top is still a bit all over the place, the differences between the years on base usage are quite small, and that in recent years, indie games that rely more on base as we already discussed, became more popular, this trend becomes even more iffy. And so, with all of this in mind, the most reasonable conclusion here is that the prevalence of base in video games does not change that much throughout the years. And I know that this result can be disappointing to some, but to me, this is what research is all about. That is, it's about coming up with interesting and often stupid questions, and doing everything in my power to find answers in a robust way. And then, even if I end up with results that are not what I predicted initially, I'm still happy, as I figured some stuff out and I learned something new. And I hope today you share the sentiment, and that you also learned something, including that you can use bass heavy music, some droning noises, and a slower delivery to create a thinly veiled attempt to invoke an emotional response from the viewers of your YouTube videos. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.